Kia ora, it's Ruth here in my backyard in Christchurch and this is part two of my April garden tour. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a little link up top so you can see what we've got to so far. But we're just in the second part of the garden. And down here, I've had some zucchinis that have gone really well and some that just haven't. I think part of it is that it's been growing in this um, tree mulch. It's only just been put down for the first year and I think potentially the second year it's down, it might be able to grow things better. Here we've started pulling off um, rhubarb to try and cook it all before it all kind of dies. As you'll see, oh the leaves are under here, we've got a pile of stuff. A lot of them, the leaves have actually got a bit frosted and the stalks are just all floppy and yuck. So I can't use them, so I'm making sure that I get all of them out before we have for proper frosts. Some of our flowers, our cosmos, are still going really well. So I don't want to pull this out just yet, but as I said in the last video, I'm just trying to find some room around the bottom to re-enrich the soil and then put some things in for winter. Here we've got some more beetroot, some lettuce that has been got by the birds. We have our broccolini, which I absolutely love broccolini, so we've been having some good harvests of that, as well as the leaves. We use these broccoli leaves quite a bit. Our beans, this plant is the only one that's had beans on it out of our scarlet runners. We've been getting a few a day now, not as many, but these little guys down here, they've just been taking all the energy and no reward, <laughs> so these guys will be coming out soon. Got lots of marigolds being interplanted. Our tomatoes are slowly coming out. We're still getting some ripen. Oh, but then, as I said, we've got some splitting because of all the rain. Down here, I've got a whole lot of purple sprouting broccoli. So these I'm really looking forward to coming. They are a little bit small for this time of year, so we'll see if we get any over winter. It might end up being kind of spring into early summer that they come out. This garden, I've half gone through. So I had all the um, interplanted beetroot and carrots. Um, and so this, I've just put some more compost in and covered it with pea straw, taking out the carrots. As you can see, there's some that are beautiful, that have gone really well, and others have already split because of the rain. This one's an epic split, so I don't know if we'll be able to use that one. So I really need to get out the rest of the carrots at the other end, so I get more nicely shaped carrots and less ones that are split, and a few double-legged ones. At the end of this garden, I have got some red kale which I haven't grown before and it's going quite well. Got some coriander that I got from a friend and then some parsley that I still need to plant out. And this garden's much the same as it has been. But I've got my Brussels sprouts. These ones I grew at the start of December and I think that's the time to get them done because they're starting to bulb up quite well which means as winter goes it will keep cropping really well whereas you saw with my other ones they are a bit small. More broccolini because we love it. Marigolds. This is the kale that um, last year all went to flower and so I chopped it right down at the base and just left it because I've been learning about leaving the roots in the ground. Chopped it at the base and then it's come away again. So that's pretty good. Got another zucchini plant down here. We'll just see how long that stays in. Here's all my caged seedlings that I've been growing. I'll take you inside. Um, so we've got a whole lot of different ones. We've got some more Brussels sprouts, more lettuce, some calendula, more different types of kale. Um, got a whole lot of pansies down there, and these are the purple sprouting broccoli that I've just pricked out from my class. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, try to get you back out. I'm hoping that I might be able to leave some seeds or some seedlings that will be able to grow not too much so that when school starts back again that I will be able to bring them into school. But we'll just see how that goes. I'll just take you over to see the chickens. They're all pretty happy at the moment. They are kind of wondering why I'm at home so much though. <laughs> coming to say hi and over there is I've planted some chicken greens I'll just take you in actually mm. now as you see our chickens are starting to fly a bit more we did um, clip their wings when we first got them but we haven't clipped them since because they haven't been coming over this fence but yesterday when I was pruning the peach tree one of them came and jumped on the fence which is the first time I've seen it I managed to give it a little tap off and they haven't been over so we'll just see we might need to start um, trimming their wings but down here is chicken greens that I've planted, again in the cage, so that the girls can't get them. But my plan is, oh, they're all very nosy, hello, hello, hello. Now that those ones have um, popped up, I'm going to get another cage and put it somewhere else, so I've got another lot of greens for them. And then once those ones are bigger, I'll slowly move it over, so that the girls get some fresh greens in their coop when I'm not free-ranging them. And our grapes are going really well. We've been picking bunches that are really nice edible. Um, you don't have to do anything with them. And once they've got a little bit of colour, like kind of these ones, we've been picking a bunch or two every couple of days so we can just enjoy them. The birds have been enjoying them too, but that's okay because they are a free gift from our neighbours that have come over the fence. Okay, taking you back out of the chicken coop, I'll just take you over to see 
Oh, these tomatoes, yes, they are definitely splitting, so some of these need to come off. Um, they're probably nearly all needing to come off, but I'm just holding out for that last little bit of sun. I really want them to be able to sun ripen so that we can get everything going. Down here, we've taken off the edge, so soon we'll be barking all of this and putting our new planter boxes there. On the deck we've got the wood that we're going to be using. Um, I'll just put it on its side to dry out a bit because we did leave it in the rain. And hopefully, in the next couple of days, we'll start putting those together so we'll have two more planter boxes. Over here, our persimmon is still hanging on the tree. And it's going okay. So our other one did fall off. So we'll just see how it goes. And we've got our blue tarpaulin. Oh, I'll, take you, I'll show you the worms just on the way through. The worms are all pretty happy at the moment. They're getting a lot of food scraps and they're enjoying it, which is great. And our blue tarpaulin covering our soil, which will soon go into the planter boxes. It was really great being able to get to garden box before the lockdown happened so we could get our soil to put the planter boxes and the mulch, the forest floor bark, um, to put around the edges where the planter boxes will go. So, that is my April update. Thank you so much for joining me around the garden. I'd be really interested to know what you're planting, what's going on in your garden. And as I said before, if you haven't started gardening, now's a pretty good time to, even if it's just preparing some soil, and um, buying some seeds online, giving it a go. So, catch you next time. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Ka kite.